Today's New Testament reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 22nd chapter. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as one who serves. For who is the greater, one who reclines at table or one who serves? Is it not the one who reclines at table? But I am among you as the one who serves. You are those who have stayed with me in my trials, and I assign to you as my Father assigned to me a kingdom, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny me three times. And he said to them, When I sent you out with no money bag or knapsack or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, Nothing. He said to them, But now, let the one who has a money bag take it, and likewise a knapsack. And let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was numbered with the transgressors. For what is written about me has its fulfillment. And they said, Look, Lord, here are two swords. And he said to them, It is enough. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Rise, and pray that you may not enter into temptation. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's Word, we welcome Pastor Gavin Mize. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Who is the greatest? It's a question, I think, that we have in the back of our minds a lot of times, uh, at least as we fulfill our vocations and we climb that corporate ladder. Who's going to get the raise? Who's not going to get the raise? Who in life has the better lot? Who is the smartest? Who is the one who will be the greatest among men? Well, the disciples asked that very question to Christ himself. In verse 24, we see a dispute rose among them as to which of them would be regarded as the greatest. And Christ simply says to them, You are those who have stayed with me in my trials, and I assign to you, as my Father assigned to me, a kingdom, that you may eat and drink at my table, and my kingdom, and sit at my thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. What is mine is yours, says Christ. There is not the greatest of the disciples in this temporal life. 
there is only the portion that Christ offers of himself. And thanks be to God, because if we decided to look inward on ourselves and we decided to ask ourselves who is the greatest, the answer will always be the great idol, me, me, me. After all, even the disciples brought up an argument amongst themselves as to who was going to be the greatest. You consider yourselves the greatest and then beg for scraps from the table of the Lord. And he gives them. That's the thing. Right after the discussion regarding who was going to be the greatest, we see Jesus actually foretelling Peter that he was going to deny him three times before the cock crows. And Peter says that he will not. Lord, I am ready to go with you to both prison and to death, says Simon Peter. Who is the greatest? I would go with Christ to death. I tell you, you have betrayed your Lord. And yet, when we look at that, it is not dependent upon who is the greatest, lest we look at who is the one who fulfills Scripture. And Christ says, starting at verse 35, that it is He that fulfills all Scripture. He says, But now let no one who has money bag take it, and likewise a knapsack, and let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one, for I tell you that this Scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was numbered with the transgressors. Christ took upon himself your sin. Christ took upon himself the sin of the whole world. And then he moves effortlessly right to the Mount of Olives where he prays to his father and he says, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, and here we pray, what we pray every time we pray the Lord's Prayer, not my will, but yours be done. And so God the Father did not pass the cup. Rather, He poured the cup of wrath upon His Son at the crucifixion. That you would not be dead in your trespasses. That you will not be caught sleeping. But that you would rise and pray in faith. And that you would know the reality that you have the salvation given by the one who fulfilled Scripture, the greatest, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has washed you in baptism, feeds you from His table, the scraps that we're unworthy to receive, yet He commands, take and eat, take and drink. This is my body, this is my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. And so we eat, and so we drink. And then the question becomes not who is the greatest, but who is it that is forgiven? And we say, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.